I'm going to take you through a few exercises on how to determine who you really are. And we, you know, this is not a workshop, and I, I'm going to speed through this. I've given you, um, you have yellow sheets on your tables with the following four slides. If you don't take notes fast enough, you'll find all the, the information on the next four slides right in front of you. The first thing you want to do is create a career vision or blueprint, what you ideally want to do in several categories. And then empower yourself to go out and find it. This is the strategy versus, you know, looking for whatever exists out there that, has, that you're not interested in. So the first item on this list are your values. Values are key. It's your compass to this whole process. You need to know what's most important to you. And it, it's so critical when you do this work, you, you just automatically create your target companies. For example, if one of your top values is you know, helping society, you're going to want to look for companies that have the same value. Or maybe that's the industry they're in. So values are things like healthy society, leadership, excellence, self-respect. You need to know what's most important to you. That's step number one. Number two, I call this the doing category. These are your favorite skills. These are verbs ending in ing. And these are the things you would love to do all day long. You get to decide what those things are. These are not so much things that maybe you're good at but you don't enjoy. So for example, I was good at math in high school, but I have no interest or desire to ever be a cost accountant, sorry accountant table, um, or to do spreadsheets. So you want to find out what you know, write down what you really love to do. For example, my list includes speaking and inspiring and writing and creative thinking and strategizing and coaching. You know, come up with your ideal list. The third category is the ideal environment. This is the culture, the leadership style of the company that you like to work for. If your values are met and you're doing what you love all day long, it's still not going to work for you if the environment is not right for you. You might be somebody who is very, very motivated by uh, an entrepreneurial, innovative kind of environment. You might be somebody who is not. So you need to really understand what is it that motivates you. And by the way, on the internet today, you can find out almost anything. For example, there's a website called Glassdoor, glassdoor.com, and employees are anonymously writing down or, or submitting information about their companies, their bosses, their CEOs, the culture. So more and more of this information you can find out. The next category is where you talk about or you identify your passions, your curiosities, and your interests. And this is category number four. And I'm going to illustrate why it's number four um, with, with a story. So there was this woman who was a marketing executive. And um, her passion was to uh, raise money for breast cancer research. And when she was laid off, she um, went to work for one of those companies. And after four weeks, she voluntarily quit. And the reason is her values weren't met. Uh, an example was she, one of her top values was family. And she had to work several nights a week till 10 o'clock at night with volunteers. Uh, she wasn't doing what she loved to do, so the skills set was not what she enjoyed. And the environment was not right for her. She was very stressed out by this chaotic, startup kind of environment where she was somebody who was much more productive in a structured, uh, you know, policies and procedures kind of environment. So that's why she left. You also want to look at other things that are important to you. Um, geography, do you want to stay in Atlanta? Are there other places you want to move to? Um, travel, how much travel 
are you willing to do? What salary requirements? Other considerations. So create your um, career blueprint. Number two. Okay, so these are really uh, wonderful questions that I like to ask because it gets to the core of your branding, your competitive advantages, what makes you stand out. So for example, question number one, you know, think about, I like to say, look at your entire career and think about those times when you just lost track of time and you loved what you were doing. What were you doing? What were you engaged in? Start writing those things down. Think about them. What am I better at than anyone else? Same thing. Look back. It could have been last week, 10 years ago. What were you doing when you just had this enormous feeling of confidence that you were just better than your peers at something? What is your favorite problem to solve? I love this question. It's a big picture question. We're looking for themes here. So, for example, my favorite problem to solve is I love to help people identify and reach their career potential. You know, think about what, it, what do you think about? What, what are those similar problems that you like to solve? What can I clearly visualize as finished? This question, um, we all have the ability to visualize something. So for example, if one of you came and talked to me for 15 minutes and I listened, I could clearly visualize what you could be from a career perspective. I could see it. But if I walked into an empty room with nothing in it, I have no idea. I can't visualize what it would look like you know, with furniture and curtains, and there are people that can visualize that. So think about what you have the ability to visualize as a finished product. And what am I a resource for? What kinds of questions do pe people typically come to you for? Think about that. Now these questions are sometimes hard to answer on your own, so get somebody to help you with that. I would have done a group exercise had we had some time here. Um, th this these sets of questions are designed to really get to that passion and that brand and that fire in you. And the number one question here is, think about what drives you crazy and what makes you angry in the world and why. That will get to that core fire. So, for example, what drives me crazy and gets me really angry is I can't stand it when people settle in their lives. It drives me nuts. When people tell me I'm just going to take this lousy paycheck and this lousy job that I hate and I'm going to work at it for 20 years. Or I, I'm in a job search and I'm just, I, I, you know, I, I'm just, I'm going to settle. I'm going to go for something that, you know, the economy's bad and I'm just going to take this low job that I can't stand but I'm just going to do it. It drives me nuts because I know people can do a lot better. So for these questions, you want to look at the opposite or something positive when you're trying to figure out what makes you stand out. So for example, for me, the opposite of settle might be demanding the most or helping people see other options. So this is where you start to frame what is it that you do for other people because that's what it's really all about.